Okay, so now if I put the two things together, what I will get is actually a formula where I have to integrate over x an integral over y. Okay, and so this is called an iterated integral because we iterate twice the process of taking an integral. Okay, so again, what's important to realize here, I mean, I'm going to say that several times over the next few days, but that's because it's the single most important thing to remember about double integrals. The bounds here are just going to be numbers, okay, because the question that I'm asking myself here is what is the first value of x by which I might want to slice, and what is the last value of x? You know, which range of x do I want to look at to take my red slices? And the answer is I would go all the way from here, that's my first slice, to somewhere here, that's my last slice. For any value in between these, I will have some, sort, some red segment and I will want to integrate over that. On the other hand, here, the bounds will depend on the outer variable x. Because if I fix a value of x, what the values of y will be depends on x in general. Okay. So I think probably we should do lots of examples to convince ourselves, you know, and to see how it works. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's called an iterated integral because first we integrate over y and then we integrate again over x. Okay? So we can do that, well, I mean, y depends on x or x depends, no, actually x and y vary independently of each other inside here. What, what is more complicated is how the bounds on y depend on x. But actually you could also do it the other way around. First integrate over x and then over y, and then the bounds for x would depend on y. We'll see that on an example. Yes? Uh, for your y values, mm -hmm. So for y, I'm using the range of values for y that corresponds to the given value of x. Okay? I mean, remember, this is just like a plot in the xy plane. Above that, we have the graph. Maybe I should draw a picture here instead. For a given value of x, so that's a given slice, I have a range of values for y that is from, you know, in this picture, it's the leftmost point on that slice to the rightmost point on that slice. So where I start and where I stop depends on the value of x. Does that make sense? Kind of, okay. Okay, uh, no more questions? No? Okay. So let's do a first example. So let's say that we want to integrate the function 1 minus x squared minus y squared over the region defined by x between 0 and 1 and y between 0 and 1. So what does that mean geometrically? Well, z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and it's a variation on, you know, something. I think actually we've plotted that one, right? when we, f that was our first example of a function of two variables, possibly. And so we saw that the graph is this paraboloid pointing downwards. Okay, it's what you get by taking a parabola, par parabola and rotating it. And now what we're asking is what is the volume between the paraboloid and the xy plane over the square of side one in the xy plane, x and y between zero and one. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, so see, here I've tried to represent the square, 
and will just sum the areas of the slices as, say, x varies from 0 to 1. And here, of course, setting up the bounds will be easy because no matter what x I take, y still goes from 0 to 1. See, it's easiest to do double integrals when the region is just a rectangle in the xy plane because then you don't have to worry too much about what are the ranges. Okay, so let's do it. Well, that would be the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared minus y squared dy dx. Okay, so I'm dropping the parentheses, but if you still want to see them, I'm going to put them in you know, very thin so that you see what it means, but actually the convention is we won't put these parentheses in there anymore. Okay? So what this means is first I will integrate 1 minus x squared minus y squared over y ranging from 0 to 1 with x held fixed. So what that represents is the area in this slice. So see here actually I've drawn, well, what happens is actually the function takes positive and negative values. So in fact I will be counting positively this part of the area and I will be counting negatively this part of the area. I mean as usual when I do an integral. So, what I will do to evaluate this, I will first do what's called the inner integral. So, to do the inner integral, well, it's pretty easy. How do I integrate this? Well, it becomes, so what's the integral of 1? It's y. Just the only thing to remember is we're integrating with respect to y, not to x. Okay? The integral of x squared is x squared times y. And the integral of y squared is y cubed over 3. Okay? And then we plug in the bounds, which are 0 and 1 in this case. And so when you plug y equals 1, you will get 1 minus x squared minus one-third minus, well, for y equals zero, you get zero, zero, zero. So nothing changes. Okay, so you're left with two-thirds minus x squared. Okay, and that's a function of x only. Here, you shouldn't see any y's anymore because y was your integration variable. But you still have x. You still have x because the area of this shaded slice depends, of course, on the value of x.